He's written eight books on consumer finance. Four have been bestsellers. We're talking about Dennis Tubergen. And when you're hearing Dennis Tubergen, that means it is time for another edition of the Retirement Lifestyle Advocates Radio Show, or RLA Radio. And I was so happy to have you along. I'm Jeremy Bolker, and uh, I want to welcome in Dennis Tubergen to the program. And uh, uh, Dennis, it was uh, you know a neat program last week here with we we're talking about the different banking systems and uh, and now we're going to gear really a lot of the show towards inflation. But uh, hey, how are you doing today? I'm great, Jeremy. I'm great. And uh, let me remind the listeners, October is coming to a close. So if you've not yet requested the October 2023 special report, how unsustainable debt levels might affect your retirement dreams, along with strategies to consider, requestyourreport.com is the website. I wanted to get that in. Today is the last day you can get that, requestyourreport.com. So yeah, always a pleasure to be back with you, Jeremy. Uh, Dennis, on a side note, we don't have much time. Have you picked out your Halloween costume? I, uh, Jeremy, don't typically go as anything yeah. other than me. I'm scary enough every day. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. Well, good, good, good stuff. Well, uh, you know, in the program coming up uh, here today, uh, Egon Von Greyers, he's the founder and chairman of uh, Matterhorn Asset Management uh, in the country of Switzerland. So that's going to be uh, exciting to talk with him about inflation. Uh, but Dennis, if we could, you know, sort of setting up this this conversation here over the next couple of segments, uh, you had some fun with the comment that the Nobel Prize winning economist Paul uh, uh, Krugman had made about inflation. And uh, I'd like to know what was that 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 comment, and give us a little detail here on 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 what your 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 comment was here, and what is going on. Well, I'll have to first say that Mr. Krugman, who is a uh, Nobel Prize winning economist, uh, put up a post on X, formerly Twitter, and he illustrated the consumer price index. If you don't count food, if you don't count energy. If you don't count shelter and you don't count used cars. So Mr. Krugman says the war on inflation is over if you exclude all those things that, of course, we all have to buy. Now, he later said that maybe he got a little bit premature after a bunch of people called him out. Uh, Jim Bianco, who is a highly regarded uh, analyst, he's the president of Bianco Research. Uh, he said, how ridiculous. It excludes about 60% of the index, 60% of what we use to figure out what the inflation rate is. So for Krugman to say that the inflation battle has been won, if we only exclude food and energy, how many of our listeners went to the grocery store last week and went to the gas station last week, or maybe paid rent or made a mortgage payment last week? I would bet the vast majority of them. And yet, Krugman, when making his statement, excluded all those things. So when you think about inflation, the rate of inflation has slowed. But the, here's the reality about inflation. Prior price increases are still baked into current prices. At my grocery store, prices have not gone down. They haven't gone up quite as fast over the past six months as they were. But they're still going up. And I haven't seen any price go back down. So in my view... We're still fighting this war on inflation, and recent stats show that inflation is accelerating once again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, a major issue here, uh, and um, you know, it's causing many to alter their spending. But then again, some of it's not causing them to alter their spend, and that's why we're getting this massive debt. But anyway, let's for the the, the say that, that I mean that's a whole other conversation there. But uh you did talk about some interesting data on consumer behavior and inflation in one of your more recent newsletters. And again, the don't want to miss that October report. Make sure to go to requestyourreport.com. But Dennis, going back in a previous newsletter, you had talked about uh some consumer behavior and that is very good information and I think can tell uh, not only just a short term, but a longer term story of what's going on in the economy too. Yeah, Jeremy, and as far as debt goes, I mean, a lot of the debt accumulation uh, took place when interest rates were very, very low. Now interest rates are rising and businesses that have adjustable rate loans are finding that it's costing them a lot more to service their debt. 
And the federal government, as they have a $2 trillion deficit, uh, the, the Fed has been monetizing a lot of that debt. So that's created a lot of inflation. So yeah, getting back to your question, only 11% of those surveyed by Statista said that they have not changed their behavior as a result of inflation. So that means 89% of Americans have made decisions to try to help them deal with inflation. 64% of them said they're spending less on non-essentials. That alone is a really bad statistic for an economy like the United States economy that's dependent more than 70% on consumer spending. When consumers spend less on non-essentials, a recession is baked in. And I have been long, long said that we are going to see a recession. We will not see a soft economic landing. It's not surprising that 64% of those surveyed said they're shopping harder for bargains. 39% says they're cutting back on how much they drive. 39% are not going out for dinner or lunch anymore. 32% are saying, I'm keeping the heat set at a lower level, so I save some money on utilities, I'm turning off lights, and I'm not pursuing a lot of my hobbies, 27% said. So this is really impacting a lot of Americans. So while Mr. Krugman says the inflation battle is over, two out of three Americans don't agree. They're spending less on non-essential items, and they're also shopping around for deals. Well, that's why he has the Nobel uh, uh, Prize, uh, Dennis, and you don't, right? But uh, hey, it, uh, uh, it, you know, what was your? But I got, I got to ask you. I mean, you've been on here, uh, retirement uh, lifestyle advocates radio show here for years. What is your forecast for inflation right now? Well, I, I think I talked about the fact, uh, Jeremy, that on, on last week's program, but I'll bring it up again for context. Um, on September 18, the Treasury reported that the amount of money borrowed by the federal government to co cover operating expenses stood at $33.04 trillion. It took three months for Washington to drive the debt from $32 trillion to $33.04 trillion. However, in the last 20 days, the government has added $500 billion in debt to get the total debt to $33.5 trillion. So these numbers speak for themselves. The debt accumulation trajectory, the rate at which debt is accumulating at the national level, is reaching a level that will, in my view, have to result in the Fed resorting to more currency creation. When that happens, and I believe in my view, and this is my opinion, it's a when, not an if, when it happens, that will further fuel the inflation that it's altered the lifestyle of all but 11% of the American population that we just talked about. So I think we we have more inflation ahead. And again, if you have not yet requested our Precious Metals Buyer's Guide to get some more information on how to potentially protect yourself from inflation, you can go to PLP Metals, that's P as in Papa, L as in Lima, P as in Papa, PLP Metals, and request a free Precious Metals Buyer's Guide. There's no cost for that and no future obligation. So I'd encourage you to check that out just to get some information to help you potentially protect yourself from this inflation that I believe uh, will, will intensify. And that's likely just around the corner, in my view. Dennis, before we bring on our, our guest here, could you touch on your forecast for just the overall economy? And we talked about you know, inflation and sometimes these things go hand in hand. Sometimes they are slightly dependent on each other. What's your what's your forecast? Uh, uh, for the economy and investing markets in particular? Well, Jeremy, for a long time, I have been forecasting stagflation. That is an economic condition that's defined as a contracting economy, which is a recession, and rising consumer prices. So for all of our listeners out there, I believe we're going to see inflation or higher prices in the things we have to buy, like food and fuel. And I believe we're going to see lower prices in things that we own, like stocks and real estate. Now, there are those that disagree with me. But when you look at the debt numbers, you look at the rate at which debt is accumulating, um, the, the debt levels are too high to ever be paid with honest money. So the U.S. government's going to have a couple choices. One, lean on the Fed and hope the Fed will create more currency. Uh, or two, 
cut spending, which will immediately put us into a deflationary collapse type environment. So I talk about this in the October special report, as I mentioned at the outset of this segment. This is the last month to get the report. It's titled, It's the Debt Stupid, How Unsustainable Debt Levels May Affect Your Retirement Dreams and Strategies to Consider Now. All you need to do to get the report is go to requestyourreport.com. Let us know where to mail it. It is free. It's without any obligation. Again, it's requestyourreport.com. And Jeremy, just in the couple of seconds we have left here, I want to remind everybody again, the Precious Metals Buyer's Guide is also free. It's also without any future obligation. That website is PLP Metals. That's plpmetals.com. Again, just let us know where to mail the info, and we'll be glad to do so on our nickel. Uh, we'll be back with Mr. Egon Von Greyerts after these words. Welcome back to RLA Radio. I'm your host, Dennis Tubergen. Joining me once again on today's program is returning guest, Mr. Egon Von Greyerts. Uh, I should point out that I have been a longtime follower of Egon's work. He is a uh, prolific writer and commentator, and uh, certainly appreciate his perspective. Uh, you can learn more about his work at goldswitzerland.com. And Egon, welcome back to the program, and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, very good to speak to you again. Uh, look forward to our chat. As will I. So, so Egon, let me just start, if I could. Uh, Worldwide, uh, I think Reuters recently reported there's $305 trillion of debt up triple from the time of the financial crisis. Can this possibly have a happy ending? Uh, no, sadly not, Dennis. And, uh, you know, I've been talking about and writing about this for um, well, 25 years at least. Um, and, um, you know, I've also been saying that to that $305 trillion or I think in my um, estimation, it is about 330 plus trillion today. But that's just part of it. You know, we have the shadow banking system and, and things that are not reported officially. And part of that is the, the derivative uh, uh, outstanding in the world. And officially, the Bank of International Settlement in Basel calls that around 600 trillion. But, you know, if, if you actually um, count everything that is not reported properly, I would have thought. I think we are probably near two trillion, two quadri two quadrillion, in derivatives, um, and you know that that is quasi debt. Um, and and when the system breaks down, uh, those derivatives will become real debt, in my view, because they have, they have to be saved by by central banks. <clears throat> so you are talking about anywhere from starting at three hundred trillion and then going to you know more than two quadrillion. Uh, whatever the level it, it is, it doesn't really much matter because even that only uh, 330 trillion, um, it, no, the world can never repay it. So, um, and of course, not even that, but you know, the debt is now increasing at a rapid rate. You know, the biggest debtor uh, in the world, the U.S., is now uh, increasing you know, debts and deficits at, at an accelerating rate. Um, uh, and so uh, they are uh, exacerbating uh, this whole situation. And, and, you know, I can't see, and this is why we started uh, thinking about wealth preservation and holding uh, physical gold outside of the banking system already 25 years ago almost. I, I can't see the banking system surviving in its present form. You know, uh, uh, the, 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 the best form of survival will, will uh, for the system will be unlimited money printing and, and but you know when you're printing uh, worthless pieces of paper and call it money that's not going to save the system and, and eventually the, the system will, will collapse under the weight of, of, of worthless paper uh, and i think that's the risk we're facing now no one you know, can, can predict exactly how and when this is going to happen but what we do know is that uh, when, when when risk is at a heightened level that we're seeing today you have to protect yourself against that and, and holding assets in the banking system, whether you hold them directly with your, in bank accounts, which might even be bank accounts. If they're not confiscated, you, you know, if you take uh, the U.S., I could easily see that you, uh, U.S. citizens will be forced to put a major part of their savings in bank accounts or an important part of it um, into um, Treasury bonds, the Treasury bills to finance the U.S. deficits. So, so uh, um, 
you know, and therefore, and and if you hold also uh, other security stocks or bonds, etc., within the the financial system, you always have the custodial risk. That is, that you know, it's it's held supposed to be your assets, uh, those securities. But you know, when banks are under pressure, they easily uh, uh, use that money uh, as margin, and we saw that in two thousand and eight to 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 ten or eight to nine. That, that financial institutions were actually using client assets as security. So this is why we're saying that you know anybody who's worried about their assets uh, within the financial system should not put whatever they think is wealth preservation. A lot of people think you know property is wealth preservation or or, or, or bonds, etc. But you know I, I, the only the only thing is to have real assets, in my view. Or, or a major um, part of your wealth in, in real assets, and of course, the foremost of real assets, the, the, the king of the metals, is, is gold. So that's where uh, you know, people should have an important part. I'm not a gold bug at all. You know, I only came to gold as, as being the best consequence of the risks I see and are out of the insurance you require. Um, uh, and um, uh, throughout history, that's certainly been the case because it's remember, gold is the only money that has ever survived in history. Every other currency has gone to zero without fail for the last few thousand years, um, uh, and it's going to happen this time too. And we're not far away, in my view. You know, if you take the, this era from 1913 when the Fed was created, all currencies are down uh, 97 to 99 percent already. So we have. Um, two three percent to go to zero, um, but remember that two three percent is hundred percent from now, and I think we'll see that whether that takes five years or it takes ten years, it doesn't matter. Um, the trend is clear, and it will happen. So, you know, people should think about protection, Dennis. Well, I'm chatting today with Mr. Egon von Greyerts. He is the founder and chairman of Matterhorn Asset Management. You can learn more about his work at GoldSwitzerland.com. And Egon, there's all this talk, uh, particularly from the Fed, about about tightening to to get inflation under control. Based on what you just said, is the is the Fed really playing a a, a game of charades, so to speak? Well, the, well, they are because on the one hand, yes, inflation is there, and and official inflation is much higher than the U.S. is reporting now. Any person or, or any house or any, any, especially females who do more of the sh- food shopping. Uh, but anyone going to the shop, bu- buying things, include, especially food um, or, or buying um, petrol or, or, or gasoline uh, at the, you know, for, the, for your car um, uh, or buying insurance or, or, or you know, <laughs> buying a- 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 anything um, that, that uh, is affected by Hello. That that is affected. Sorry, um, that's affected uh, by, by this um, incredible inflation we're seeing worldwide, uh, including commodity inflation. You know, knows that the real inflation is probably twenty percent for most people, especially of the things they spend money on. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, you know, we, we are talking about. Uh, a, a level of, of inflation that 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 uh, the Fed knows that, of course. Uh, so what, they're, if they're reporting four four percent or whatever, that's not the real inflation, and they're trying to kill that inflation. The problem is that you know we we have a, a problem now that that there is actually not not enough supply of goods and services. That will quickly change, in my view. But nevertheless, the the interest rate trend changed. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, you know, we had a, a downtrend from 1980 to, to 20, 2021, you know, for, from from the high levels of, you know, 16% or so for the 10-year uh, U.S. Treasury, um, and down, down to half a percent. And now the trend is strongly up, in my view, for the next 20, 30 years. Won't be a straight line, and there'll be corrections, and there'll be, be vicious corrections in, in, uh, of this uptrend. Nevertheless, the trend is up for the simple reason that the Fed and the U.S. needs to print uh, unlimited amounts of money in coming years uh, because of the deficits, uh, and they are not going to improve. Um, uh, 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 and on top of that, you know, the, the, um, the any bond 
and the security of any bond will deteriorate because we have, the, 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 the debt is going to be less and less secure because most borrowers, including sovereign borrowers, are not going to be able to repay it, and certainly not with current money. And, and therefore, you will have debt defaults also, and even sovereign debt defaults. I'm quite certain about that. Um, uh, sure, uh, governments don't call it a de default if they, if they print more money uh, that is worthless, or if they change the currency just to, to fool everybody and think that, well, the old currency is gone and we have a new one and that's worth a lot of money. That's just another form of fiat money, of course. Um, so in my view, inflation will continue for those two reasons. Um, uh, and uh, therefore, um, the Fed, except for short periods of, of uh, stopping uh, the increase uh, in interest rates or, or, or reversing it temporarily. I think the trend is up and that's going to kill the economy, of course, because the US with the, with the debt um, and, our, and most countries around the world cannot afford the interest on the debt. And, never, and of course, they can never re afford to repay it. No one is even thinking about repaying it. Um, and, and as we've seen, you know, that, that debt that you said 300 trillion, you know, at the beginning of, of this century it was 100 trillion. Um, uh, and, or just under 100 trillion. So uh, debt is growing exponentially, um, uh, uh, something that has never been seen in history before. And that could only lead to perdition uh, for the US and, uh, and for uh, certainly the Western world. So we have some difficult times ahead, Dennis, very difficult. Well, Egon, we have about a little over a minute left in this segment. Uh, maybe just enough time for you to share with the listeners what you do uh, at Matterhorn Asset Management. Again, the website is goldswitzerland.com. Yes, we started that business, this business uh, f firstly for, for protecting our own wealth uh, uh, and, the one, and, the, with, and the investors that, that were close to us at the time. Um, and then we opened it up to, to outside investors in order to buy physical gold and silver and store it out of the banking system, primarily in the safest vaults in, in the world, world. Uh, one is the biggest gold vault in, in, in private gold in the world in Switzerland, in, in the Swiss Alps. Uh, and, and we created this in, in order for people to be able to protect their wealth outside of the financial system. And of course, um, in the last 20 years since we did that, gold is up six, eight times in, in and in most currencies, uh, and um, if you take in the weaker currencies, it's up a lot more. So, it, but I think we the gold's journey hasn't started yet. It's starting now. We have a golden dawn, as I say in my, my latest article, um, and we're going to see. Sadly, because the reasons for that happening uh, are on the wrong, or the wrong reason. Sadly, we're going to see a lot higher gold price because of the problems in the world. Well, my guest today is Mr. Egon von Greyerts. You can learn more about his work at goldswitzerland.com. And uh, the good news is Mr. von Greyerts will join me in the next segment, so stay with us. Welcome back to RLA Radio. I'm your host, Dennis Tubergen. I have the pleasure of chatting once again today with the founder and chairman of Matterhorn Asset Management, Mr. Egon von Greyerts. I would encourage you to check out his work and his writing at goldswitzerland.com. And Egon, uh, to close the last segment, um, you, you mentioned uh, a recent article that you wrote. Uh, the title is, the, A 1987 Crash in Stocks with a Golden Dawn for Oil and Gold. And I thought it was extremely interesting in that article. You discussed the historical relationship between oil and gold. Uh, can you explain? Yes, you know, as an investor, you should always look for something that maintains its value uh, in in real terms and its its purchasing power. Um, and and uh, as money goes, gold is the only money or currency that has been maintained its purchasing power for the last few thousand years. Um, so an ounce of gold book. Uh, a good suit in, in Roman times, 2,000 years ago, um, and um, it's the same today. An ounce of gold uh, buys a very good suit, or, uh, 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 but you know the gold is. But if you measure it in, in paper money or fiat money, of course, 
uh, it, it will cost you hundreds of times more than it did 2,000 years ago. So, so gold is, is a per constant purchasing power, and that's why it's the perfect instrument for wealth preservation. And interestingly enough, the same is the case with, with um, more or less uh, with oil. Now, oil hasn't been around uh, you know, as for, from an investment point of view for, the, for that long, but certainly since the 1800s. And the ratio uh, between um, gold and oil has remained fairly constant. If you just take well, the last 100 years, I believe you like, even uh, you know, the, the last 50 years also, um, uh, and it stayed between roughly 10 to 20, that ratio. That means that the, the gold price is between 10 and 20 times um, the uh, oil price. Um, so and that is a more stable relationship than, than any other uh, in, in commodity or, or, or security. Um, uh, so, so that's why you know, gold is, is really um, you know, fo follow it also in a, a form of wealth preservation. But for most people, of course, you can't hold it. You can't have it at home in barrels. That will take much too uh, much space. If it's a bar barrel of oil, it costs about around $90. <laughs> and not practical to store. You can buy stocks, of course, in oil companies, uh, but that's but you can't store that in uh, you know you know. But that's normally inside the financial system. But but you know, gold is a good uh, sorry uh, oil is a good investment to hold uh, as as uh, a supplement to, to gold. Um, uh, and um, so and this is you know this, that's why it's called black gold, of course. Um, because it is it is black gold for the simple reason um, that it maintains its uh, purchasing power in the same way as gold does. Uh, and now, you know, every time you have a crisis, you know, we've seen all the oil price go up dramatically uh, just since the uh, Yom Kippur war in, in, in uh, the Middle East in, in 73, when oil was tw um, 25, 30 times uh, Depending on the country, cheaper than it is today. I remember it well. Uh, um, uh, so, um, but you know, nobody thinks about the fact that 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 it really oil is reflecting purchasing power. They just think that the you know, the Arabs and then the rest of the world just putting the oil and the, and the Russians, etc., putting the oil price up. It's not the case. It's with the governments around the world, and especially Western governments, are destroying the value of their currencies. And that's why commodities, the kind of uh, gold or oil that we're talking about, they actually maintain that value. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I could see significantly higher oil prices, especially you know, when there's a crisis. And I don't think the crisis, even if Biden goes to uh, Israel and tries to calm things down, you know, there's always been problems in the Middle East. There will continue to be. There are always wars in the Middle East. Uh, they will not stop either. And the oil price will continue to reflect that. Uh, plus, there is actually now, um, you know, the, the cost of extracting oil is going up. Um, the energy cost of actually uh, producing energy is going up. And, and therefore, um, that in itself, because it's remember, it's energy and oil that actually uh, creates the um, the wealth um, uh, in, in the, the world today. It's only it's really since we we had energy in the form of oil that you know the standard of living has increased dramatically. But now we actually have the seen peak of uh, the peak of cheap oil uh, because as I said, oil is is um, and now especially since now fracking has. Uh, is, is more or less we, we're seeing the end of fracking and, and hasn't been very economical, but short term it certainly helped the world. Um, but but now you know we, we, there 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 is not going to be enough oil in the world. And it's, it's, uh, we reached peak oil, and, and on top of that, we reached, as I said, uh, the the uh, peak uh, in, in, in or, or low in, in producing energy from oil and other fossil fuels. You know, of course, we follow everybody who wants to stop oil and, and uh, talk about the global warming and that, you know, we shouldn't have uh, any fossil fuels. Fossil fuels is 84% uh, of the energy in the world. There is no chance whatsoever to replace that short term. 
if we if we stop using fossil fuels and and wait for alternative energy to replace it, we've got to wait maybe fifty or hundred years or more. Uh, and in the meantime, <laughs> the world economy would collapse totally. It will probably anyway because of these debt problems, but that will certainly exacerbate it. So, so the energy is going to be a problem. It would be even without this economic collapse, it would be a problem because, as I said, we are not be, going to be able to pr- produce energy at the same low cost as we have because of the uh, the cost of, of producing energy from for fossil fuel. And, and then, um, so that, this is it. That, that in itself is going to create problems. On top of that, we are obviously going to see falling standards of living uh, because of the. Uh, economic problems in the world where, where this debt um, is going to lead uh, massive misery uh, in the world economy, both for the West and the East. Uh, and um, so therefore, we, um, you know, I mean, we're not looking at a very bright uh, situation here for the world. So at least that what people can do, you can't do anything about a lot of these things. You can't affect them. Uh, uh, the world economy or energy prices, what we can affect is actually how we protect the assets we have. And I think that's critical. Uh, and any anyone who doesn't actually think about that is going to be left behind and suffer dramatically. You know, we have enough problems in the, in the world with two wars um, uh, and most people are, are indebted to a level that they can never repay and countries, of course. But at least... If you can, uh, if you can uh, insure your wealth by by holding the right investments such as gold, um, then you have a, li- a better chance than most people to to survive the coming crisis. Well, I'm chatting today with Mr. Egon von Greyerts. He is the founder and chairman of Matterhorn Asset Management. The website is goldswitzerland.com. And Egon, I thought in your in your recent article that again people can find at goldswitzerland.com. Uh, you talked about stocks, and uh, I thought the parallel that you pointed out between the current pattern of the Dow and what happened in 1987 at the time of the flash crash was very interesting. Um, are we looking at the possibility of another stock market crash being imminent here? Well, is that, I'm, not, I'm actually not showing the exact graph in, in, the, um, in the article, but I'm pointing out that the pattern is exactly the same as in 87, which, of course, many of us remember extremely well. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we are anyway at a bubble top level for stocks. Um, uh, and uh, But it's interesting that it fits very well into the 87 uh, pattern. And, and I think that actually a crash is imminent. And, we're not, and, and, you know, we're not talking about a temporary correction here. Investors have got used to central banks always pumping in trillions or quadrillions of money, if you include the derivatives, to save the system. That is not going to have an effect this time. They still will do that, but that is just if you if you print worthless money on top of to to, uh, uh, to replace other worthless money. You know, in the end, uh, people will actually um, understand that it's a con. The whole financial system and monetary system is a a con. And therefore, it will not take new printed money seriously um, uh, and will know that it's worthless. Uh, So so, uh, therefore, you know, we are now looking at even though uh, central banks will do everything they can to obviously uh, rescue the system. But I think they will fail this time. 2008 was, was a nine was a miracle that they managed to do it. They're not going to manage it a second time. Uh, and the stock market is already at an extreme, only due to printed money uh, and credit expansion. Uh, and the time now when, when the market can be supported by uh, this fake money has come to an end, in my view. So we are looking at not just a temporary correction in the stock market, we're looking at a long-term downtrend, whether that's 10 or 20 or 30 years, who knows? Nobody believes they can take that long. But remember, uh, you know, the 29 peak was only reached again in uh, 50, 1954, five, 1929, 1954. It was 25 years before it was re- reached, and that was with inflation, uh, remember. Um, so it can easily take 25 years, and this bubble is much greater than uh, in 29. 
So therefore, don't expect stock markets to recover and don't expect that it's always right to be in the stock market because it won't be. And it's the same with property markets. Uh, you know, Property markets are also uh, just uh, uh, supported by uh, an, an endless amount of debt uh, that can never be repaid. So property markets will collapse too. So the, 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 the old, the, all the old safe assets are not going to be safe assets anymore. And people will not understand that because nobody's even thinking about wealth protection today. And as we many of us know, there's only half a percent of world financial assets in gold today. That is just nothing. Uh, and therefore, nobody owns gold. And that's going to change dramatically in coming years. And, you know, there won't there's no more gold to be had. There's no we can't produce more gold. This is, the mines produce about 3,000 tons plus a bit of scrap of gold every year. You can't produce any more. So the only way to satisfy an increase in gold demand, which is inevitable, will be through higher prices. People have to pay a lot higher price to get uh, an amount of gold, um, you know, which in money terms will be a lot higher for the same, for the same weight. That's what we're going to see in the next few years. And I think it's starting now, just as we talked about stock market, Turning down the gold market is now, it's been up for years, of course, but the acceleration is going to come now again, uh, and very soon in my view. Well, my guest today has been Mr. Egon von Greyerts. He is the founder and chairman of Matterhorn Asset Management. The website is goldswitzerland.com. Egon, uh, 25 minutes just flies by when I talk to you, so I sure appreciate the time. I know the listeners do too. Love to have you back down the road. Thank you for joining us. Always good to speak to you, Dennis, and, and uh, you know, I, I wish everybody uh, best, best of luck because you'll need it, but just don't wait for luck. Also think about protecting yourself and protecting your family uh, and enjoy life because you know, we have a lot of problem, problems in the world, but, you know, life is too good not to enjoy uh, even, even with problems. So uh, thank you very much, Dennis. We will end with that sage advice, and we will return after these words. And welcome back into the final segment of the Retirement Lifestyles Advocates Radio Show, our LA radio show. We are with Dennis Tubergen, and I'm Jeremy Bolker. And uh, do want to remind you again about those websites, requestyourreport.com. Last time you can do that for the October report, and it's a good one, requestyourreport.com, uh, as well as at Free Precious Metals Guide at plpmetals.com, plpmetals.com. Uh Dennis, you know, we were talking about some, uh, uh, you know, different, uh, different, different things all really throughout this, this program here, but uh, the U.S. debt, and there's just some unbelievable massive numbers right there, and it's not, not good. What does that mean on an individual basis? You and I that are filing our taxes, how does that, how does that not just impact us, but what does it mean on maybe a little bit more smaller, tangible level and what are some numbers that you could compare stuff to i think that's a a great thought in fact uh, many people uh, who are listening today are probably familiar with the hedge fund manager ray dalio ray is a uh, billionaire Uh, he was interviewed on cnbc uh, last week and he said quote we're going to have a debt crisis in this country how fast it transpires i think is going to be a function of that supply demand issue So I'm watching that very closely. But the reality is you're going to have to see a meaningful slowing of the economy as a result of this debt. Now, the question is, what will that look like? And as I said in the first segment, I believe we're going to see stagflation. I think we're going to see inflation in things we have to buy. And I think we're going to see deflation in things that we own. Because when you when you break it down, Jeremy, to answer your question, the, the, the federal debt officially is about $33 trillion, a little bit more than that. But that is literally the tip of the iceberg, to use an old metaphor. When you look at the fiscal gap of the United States, and Pro- Professor Lawrence Kolokoff, who is a former guest here on the program, now a professor at Boston University, uh, stated that the fiscal gap of the United States stands at about $240 trillion. So if you take the national debt plus the unfunded liabilities of Social Security, the unfunded liabilities of Medicare, basically you take all the promises the government has made to various 
beneficiaries of various programs and look at how underfunded they are and you add that to the debt, you've got a $240 trillion problem. Now that is a number that is so large, it is literally unsolvable. Now in the October newsletter, I talk about this. There are about 131 million tax returns filed where somebody has some form of tax liability. It doesn't mean they necessarily write a check and send it in with their tax return, but it means that the government has taken money out of their paycheck and they're not getting a refund of 100%. So there's some liability. The government keeps some of their tax money. There's 131 million tax returns in that category. So let's take the $240 trillion fiscal gap. Let's divide it by those 131 million tax returns. And if we're going to solve this problem, it's going to take another $1.8 million per tax return. Now, given that the median net worth of the average adult American, the median adult uh, net worth of an adult American, I should say, is $44,000, that is literally an impossible number to deal with, and the fiscal gap keeps growing. The operating deficit for the current fiscal year, $2 trillion, just for starters. And over the past three years, government spending has increased about 50%. So this problem is getting worse. It's not getting better. So the bottom line is this. This federal debt situation is a time bomb waiting to explode. The only question is, when will it occur and what will the fallout look like? Great. Um, well, hey, ultimately, how does this get dealt with? And those those tuning in right now. Uh, whether it be on the radio or digital audio or pod, our pod, podcast. I mean, how does that affect everybody tuning in right now? Well, there's only two things that can happen here. One, since we can all agree there's no way the, the this debt can be paid, this gap cannot be closed, then there's one of two things that can happen. First of all, the politicians in Washington will come out and say, sorry, debtors, we can't pay you. We can't pay all your Medicare bills. We can't pay all your Social Security benefits. We can't pay off the debt. If you're holding government bonds, we can only pay you part of what we owe you. We're just not going to honor our commitment. That's one. Now, I think there's zero chance that will happen. The only other outcome is that they'll have to create currency to try to close the gap. That, I believe, is exactly what will happen despite the Fed's tough talk. I talked about this with Egon von Greyerts uh, on today's program. Uh, and I have maintained for a very long time that you cannot control inflation unless the U.S. government balances its budget. And this is why. So bottom line, we're going to see, I believe, more inflation that will then be uh, coupled with uh, declining values in stocks and real estate. So that's where I would encourage everyone to get the October 2023 special report. There's strategies in the report. Uh, you can go to requestyourreport.com and just let us know where to mail the report. We'll be very glad to do that. And also, again, uh, as we close here, a reminder that you can get the Precious Metals Buyer's Guide. It just contains some free information, contains some ideas to potentially protect yourself from inflation moving ahead. You can go to plpmetals.com and request that report. That's PLP Metals, that's P as in Papa, L as in Lima, P is in Papa, plpmetals.com. That's all the time we have for this week. Glad you decided to listen in, and we'll be back again next week.